So I'm going to show you how to do the perfect titration between 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. First thing, of course, I'm going to get my safety goggles on. Now, once you have your um, burette on the retort stand set up like this, we will need to rinse out the burette with the solution that we're going to be putting into the burette. So, I'm going to take my funnel, I'm going to put that in there. What you'll notice now is that the, uh, the funnel and the top of the burette are above my eye level, which means that if I'm filling this, I'm going to be pouring um, some dangerous chemicals above my eye level, which of course is not going to be safe. So what I suggest you do is get a stool, so with this on the stool, now the, the funnel's at a much more reasonable level for me to, uh, to pour my sodium hydroxide in. At this stage I'm going to double check that my, um, the tap of my burette is closed. I'm going to take a beaker and using a permanent marker I'm going to mark this as waste. It's very important you label all bits of glass where you use them. I'm going to place that underneath my burette just to catch any drips. I'm going to pour a small amount of sodium hydroxide into the burette, like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a small amount of the sodium hydroxide through the burette into my waste beaker to make sure this is completely filled up. Um, I am then going to remove my burette from the stand and turn it over and then rotate the burette as I slowly pour this waste out into the beaker. Put the burette back in the stand and then run off any more that's in the tip there. You should then repeat this process of washing the burette um, once more. So now I'm going to get my stool back underneath the desk and I'm going to bring my whole set down onto the stool, replace the funnel in there, ensure that the tap is closed, I've got my waste beaker underneath, and then I'm going to fill this all the way up to the top. I've got to pour very carefully because if you're pouring so that the funnel fills up, you might end up with a situation um, where you've got a funnel full of sodium hydroxide and a full burette and there's absolutely nothing you can do apart from get covered in the stuff. Right, so I'm going to place that there. I'm going to remove the funnel from the top of the burette at that point. It is essential that you remove the funnel now, because otherwise any drips from the funnel are going to completely mess up your readings. And I'm going to carefully move that back up onto the desk, like that. And then, with the waste bucket underneath, you're just going to run that through, bringing the level of the water so that the bottom, the level of the sodium hydroxide, so the bottom of the meniscus, just sits on zero up there. So you need to ensure that the meniscus just sits on top of the line like this. At this point, it's probably useful to get down low and have a look at the tap here to make sure you've got no bubbles here. If you do, then a quick um, a, a quick turn in the tap fully on should get rid of any bubbles. If you struggle to get rid of any, then let um, me or Maria know and we'll come over and help you. So now we need to get a, an accurate amount of hydrochloric acid. To do that, I'm going to take a small beaker, a 100ml beaker, <laughs> label it with um, HCl so that I know that's what's going to be um, inside. Come over to the container with the hydrochloric acid and fill up a reasonable amount, doesn't need to be all the way to the top, um, but you need to make sure that you've got enough to fill your pipette. So here's my pipette, and as with the burette, I'm going to need to rinse this out before I uh, use it for my experiment. So, 
To do this, I'm going to start with one of these pipette fillers. First off, hold the number one here, and then you can squeeze the red bulb, let go of number one and let go there, and you'll notice that the, the bulb stays um, deflated. Then, take your pipette, holding it right near the top, push it into the pipette filler until you start to feel resistance. Once you're there, don't force it on, that, that's as far as you need to go. Then, so now at the end of the pipette, under the surface of the acid, hold number two, just so that you've got acid up until the bulb of the pipette. Bring the pet out of the um, out of the end of the acid. So now you're going to uh, rinse out the the pipette. So take off the pet filler, put your thumb over the end, and then carefully invert this so that you don't get any acid on your thumb. And again, twist it as you pour it out to give that a good rinse with what's going to go inside it. Okay, with that rinsed, move the waste to one side, and now we're going to fill this up with HCL. So with the pipette filler on the top of the pipette, you're going to pinch the pipette between your first two fingers like this, and with the tip of it underneath the surface, you can pick up Hold this then at a height so that you can see the line on the pipette um, and that is level with your eye line. Then hold number two so that it starts to fill. Now this is where you really need to pay attention because it will fill slowly as it rises through the bulb. Then as soon as it comes out there it's going to start rising very rapidly again. So make sure you stop filling the pipette before it reaches the pipette filler. You don't want to end up with any acid in your pipette filler. Now, you're going to pinch number three on the pipette bowl, on the pipette filler, to slowly run down that um, level of the acid against the meniscus. <clears throat> so the meniscus sits just on top of the line on the pipette. So now with your conical flask underneath here, um, you are going to hold down three on your pipette filler and that will run out all the acid into the conical flask. Another way of doing this is just to remove the pipette filler entirely. So now you'll notice there's a, a small amount of acid left in the end there. You're going to touch this just to the side of your conical flask to remove the last drop. You just still end up with a small amount in the tip. Don't blow that out using the pet filler, that should remain there. Put that to one side, and then you're going to wash down the drip you just touched out with a little bit of distilled water. And then give that a swirl around. At this stage we're ready to start our titration, so you're going to want to make sure that you've got your practical booklet at hand. Open that up so that you have um, your results table there. So now um, double check your starting reading, so check where it is now. It should be on 0, 0.00 mil and fill that into your rough reading there. Then take your acid and add a couple of drops, four or five drops of phenolphthalein. And then make sure that is well mixed in. Now at this stage, if you're right-handed, what you want to do is you want to hold the conical flask in your right hand, pinching it between your first two fingers and your thumb. What this means is that without moving my arm, I am able to swirl the flask well. All I'm doing is using my middle finger here to swirl the flask. So I can place that underneath my burette. And then I'm going to use my left hand. So I'm going to wrap my left hand around the tap like this, so that then I can control the tap again with my thumb and my first two fingers. This 
is beneficial for two things. First of all, it means that I'm not going to accidentally pull the tap out of the burette and end up with sodium hydroxide flowing everywhere. But secondly, um, the glass here is very, very delicate. And if I'm using a tap like this, you'll notice that I can wobble it quite a lot and I might end up breaking the burette here. Whereas if I'm like this, it's far more sturdy. It's much harder to put tension and, and torque on this, on this joint here. So again, with your left hand wrapped around the burette, I'm gonna hold it like this and my middle finger's underneath the far side, my thumb's on top of that side, and then my forefinger's on top of there. Um, I can now gently turn this tap. I've got quite a lot of control over it. And then I'm now starting to get some stuff running through. So I'm gonna turn this tap on and then with constant swirling, I'm gonna keep watching my conical flask and I'm watching for this pink color to stay. So as you can see, if you continue swirling, it will go. But now I've run it to a point where the pink color is, is staying. Now, this is a rough value that we're taking now which will guide us in our, in our accurate titrations. So now I need to take my final reading and I can see that the level of the sodium hydroxide is here. So I'm just gonna move the burette up so that I can take this reading far more accurately. So it's out of the burette holder. So now I'm gonna get down on a level with the numbers here and I'm gonna take an accurate reading to the closest 0 0.05 cm cubed. So this is 26, 0 0.10 and I'm going to record that in my pink book. Now it's important that we rinse out our conical flask really well so I'm going to start off just dunk that in the sink and then with a lot of tap water make sure that is fully rinsed out. Now because tap water contains quite a few impurities the next thing you want to do is rinse out the inside with distilled water so give that a couple of rinses again with distilled water to make sure that is completely clean. So now we're gonna pipette our hydrochloric acid into there. It doesn't matter this is wet, so you don't need to dry it. Um, I'm gonna squeeze the pet bowl closed. I'm gonna carefully put that on there. And then I am going to Fill this pet up and then again run this out. Okay, so then again remember you're just going to touch the end of that onto the glass to get the last little drop out. Still a bit left in the end there, that's fine, that's supposed to be there. And then rinse that down with a bit of distilled water and give it a swirl. Um, at this stage, you might feel that you need to top your burette back up to the top. So if my burette filled up and my funnel removed, and placed out of the way, I'm going to add four or five drops of phenolphthalein into the conical flask, give that a swirl, and now I'm going to place my conical flask underneath. And I know that my last, my rough titration was, a, was roughly 26.10 uh, uh, cm cubed, so I know that I can run approximately that amount in before this is gonna change. I'm gonna subtract a few, so I'm gonna run in about 23 cm cubed, like this. Straight away, and then I'm gonna give that a swirl, and I should see it completely clear. If not, then you've done your maths wrong. Now, I'm gonna start adding um, the alkali, the sodium hydroxide, very slowly because I want to find an exact end point for this reaction. So, left hand wrapped around here. I'm going to very carefully run this, uh, turn this round until, until this um, burette just starts to drip regularly. And now with it dripping regularly like this, all I need to do is focus on the conical flask and swirl. Every so often I'm going to stop the dripping just to make sure that it hasn't changed. I've got that dripping even slower now. So I've got about one drip every two seconds. 
I'm going to keep swirling. Now I'm looking for the pink colour to hang around for about 30 seconds. So I'm, I've slowed it down even more. And I'm going to turn this very slowly. I'm trying to get this so that one drop turns it. I can see I'm very close now because the pink colour is hanging around for quite a long time. Okay, so that's gone back to clear. So I'm going to add one more drop. Be very careful. So one drop, go in there. Give that a swirl. And you can see we've got a faint pink colour. Which has just gone. Again, one more drop. Give that a swirl. And now this pink colour is staying. So the indicator's turned. You can see it's very pale pink. We're not looking for really, really strong pink. We're not looking for a, um, a cerise. We're looking for just a very pale pink that stays for at least 30 seconds. I'm going to keep swirling that. Still pink. Still pink. So that means my titration has ended. So I'm going to get down on a level with the numbers again, and I'm going to take an accurate reading, and that is 24.35, which I'm going to record on my table. So then you want to make sure that you record all your values to the nearest 0 0.05. So here I've got uh, 24.35. Three, five, and then I can subtract it to find my the value of sodium hydroxide added by subtracting the final from the initial. Um, and now I'm going to repeat this again. So my final burette value I've just taken is going to be my initial. I'll double check that before I do my next thing. I'll repeat it again until I get uh, at least two values which are within 0.1 cm cubed of each other, and then I can uh, take an average.